What's up guys? Welcome back to the Mastery Podcast. I have a very uh, special guest with me today. Uh, it's been a while since I brought somebody on the podcast. Um, I'm really, really excited to be bringing today's episode with you, which is episode 90. And it's scaling your fitness business with Tom McCormick. You will have heard of me talk about Tom um, in a couple of episodes. Uh, actually, the last one and a couple before that. Uh, Tom and I have actually been working together for seven going on eight months now. And one of the most important things about bringing my um, clients on, uh, colleagues, friends, as people develop into as, as I work with people, um, is because they're real life, you know, and they're, they're people that um, are like you and want things like you, have achieved things that you want to achieve. And Tom's been on an incredible journey. Um, we've done a lot of work together and seen a lot of growth with his business. Um, Tom, welcome to the Mastery Podcast. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. Honor to be on. Thank you. Well, Tom, I think the first thing uh, for us is, I mean, we, we've started, we worked together, have been working together for the last seven months. But uh Prior to that, I mean, you've been in the fitness industry, and I, I love this because I've been in the industry 17 years this year. You've been in the industry 15 years. And one of the most important things about the guests I have on the podcast to this point, um, and I kind of want to keep it that way, um, as you rightly pointed out, we've got 10 episodes before for the 100th, and maybe we'll have a very uh, different or someone special on for that one. I think I'm heading towards the person that's potentially had the biggest impact in my career um, and trying to reach out to that person. Um, I do know that hands down, one of the biggest people that impacted it was Charles Poliquin. And sadly, mm -hmm. he's no longer around, but we always pay huge respect to the influence that he's had on your career as well as mine, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. one of the biggest influences on my career. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's quite funny when I have people on the podcast that, you know, we do end up talking about influences like Joe Bennett was on the podcast not so long ago, and we ended up talking about Charles. And, um, you know, Tom, Tom and I can kind of touch on that because, you know, it's important for me to have people on the podcast that have been in the industry a while that have stood the test of time because there's two differences, in my opinion, um, in the fitness industry at the moment. There's people that are in the industry for a short period of time and literally go down the marketing route, head down, flat out and become marketing fitness entrepreneurs. And then there are fitness professionals who develop marketing and take their personal brand to the marketplace, solving problems for people, but are still professional coaches and so there's two flip sides to this and, and I'm very um, glad that uh, the, the guys that I've had on the, the podcast and we've had Libby on the podcast are, are still coaches still actively doing it and got a very very strong personal brand so Tom could you just uh, give everybody listening a, a kind of overview of your kind of an overview of your career up to the point where you and I kind of first started speaking to each other sure um, so I started out as a personal trainer as you mentioned 15 years ago um, which was actually on the back of uh, a rugby injury. Um, I'd always wanted to be a professional rugby player. I kind of got pretty close, but then I was I was always too small, always a skinny skinny guy, and fighting against things there. An injury forced me to do something about that and find a career. I never pictured myself working um, in an office, so I, I got the qualification. I, I started out, and in, if I'm honest, back then I, I kind of I didn't I wasn't a natural in the gym. Um, a lot of guys in the industry. I think it is, they, they love the gym, they get great results, they think I want to do this because this is where I, I enjoy being. Mine wasn't that way, I was a different, like I, like I said, when I was skinny, I, I hated being in the gym, it made me nervous, I'd try and avoid it in many respects. So by getting the qualification, having, having had to do it for rugby, I then started to get a passion and learn. And what I really enjoyed was that I kind of I got out what I put in um, and, and that started to really motivate me and the results I saw meant that I wanted to make it a career. So, you know, over that time, I've, I've trained, you know, loads of people, um, gradually built up my business um, all through word of mouth and referral. I did made a lot of mistakes on the way, um, and I'm in a lot better a coach now than I, I was then. Um, so a couple, couple of things uh, that maybe are, 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 are worth touching on later on is, again, you know, you talk a lot about working the gym floor and introducing yourself to people. Well, I was a really shy, um, self-conscious kid starting out. And so that didn't come naturally to me. So at first I struggled um, and then you know, I kind of worked out what I needed to do was, was have someone that found the, the clients for me. So I actually uh, ended up working with a company that they sourced the clients. They took a big percentage 
but I trained them. And that was great. Once I was with people one on one, I could build that relationship, get them results. And, and we, we worked together and built from there. Over the years, I built up my client base, uh, as I say, all through referrals. And then I moved away. I actually set up my own gym, which I think is news to you. But uh, I had my own gym big for news. a while. Very yeah, big, big news. news. Yeah, so I had that um, in central London, um, which was brilliant. It was you know, a bit of an ego project, really, if we, we can talk about that again. Because um, I'm sure there's lots of people that think, oh, I want to run my own gym. It, it made me feel great saying I ran my own gym, but I didn't have a business plan for it. My plan was, oh, I'm good at training people. I've got a, you know, uh, loads, of, loads of clients, loads of people who want to work with me, build it and they will come type thing. Anyway, you know, after a few years, that was going well. We were making good money, but we weren't making you know, a, a fortune by any means. Unfortunately, uh, an issue with our landlords, which was National Rail and the Crossrail project, meant that our gym kind of had to, had to cease in existence. But I had my client base, and I moved them uh, into another gym uh, in the central of London, and I've been training them uh, ever since. Great. Well, it's interesting you say that because when I first started M10, it was open a gym and they will come. And mm. it's good, it's good, but then you kind of forget that you're actually running a business. So a big part of everything that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, talking to professional coaches that own gyms or are going to open gyms, is I'm honest. And I'm the, the reality of, you know, actually owning a gym is you have to become a marketer. Before you become a marketer, you have to have a business plan. Um, and you kind of probably, like me in the early days, learnt on the job. Yeah, 100%. Um, but, but if you want to make a success of something, you can't really... Um, or if you want to make it work quickly, if you've got high overheads, I mean, you, you need to go in there with a solid business plan. And the interesting thing about scaling your fitness business is because you then ended up working in the city of London. And we want to keep referencing this back to everybody that's listening, because there's going to be some people that are listening to the podcast and thinking, what are some of the gems that Tom's kind of learned along the way as a PT on the ground? Mm -hmm. And then the whole idea of the podcast is about scaling because Tom has gone through 15 years of increasing revenue, ending up having a particular time uh, away from one face-to-face -face PT to grow his online business that we're actually going to be talking about at quite length here. But from a personal training perspective, Tom, um, I one of the big things that I wanted to ask you was how important have you found your face-to-face -face coaching business? Um, how important has that been in the growth and development as you as a professional, as a coach? Absolutely crucial, uh, fundamental to everything. I mean, the work I knew now online is basically built on the lessons I've learned in person um, and then being able to to take those lessons across and apply them in, a, in admittedly a slightly different setting working with people online. But a lot of the, the art of coaching is still there. Uh, you just have to find different ways to communicate it to people when you're not stood in front of them. So the, those lessons are, have been huge. And in, in terms of kind of somebody that's thinking about making the, the switch online, what are they missing out on by not necessarily doing face-to-face -face coaching? Well, I'd say that online coaching is way harder to do than, on, uh, uh, than in person, sorry. So if you're jumping straight to online without that history uh, in person, in the trenches, in the gym, I, th I think you're making life difficult for yourself. It, it's doable. Absolutely. I'm sure there's people that have achieved it. But for me, it's been invaluable. All those countless hours and situations when I've had dialogue back and forth with someone has, has allowed me to sort of set myself up for success when I'm dealing with someone who's the other side of the world is I, I see these problems in advance. I can communicate them uh, to them and, and navigate them and, and kind of hold their hand through the process and, and in many respects try and um, uh, avoid some of these hurdles because I've seen it before. Yeah. If, I, if I was just doing that straight off the bat online because – it's just so much more, more difficult to build that relationship um, and, and have that constant uh, dialogue with them. I think that's a real challenge. Uh, no, and, and, and I completely agree with you. I mean, I've, I, I, I always talk to personal trainers about doing your time. Right. And the most important thing is, you know, you and I, OK, admittedly, you know, we're very, very close in terms of our length of time in the fitness industry. Um, with the rise of kind of social media now and, and, and everybody, you know, this is obviously talking about scaling your fitness business. Um, you and I, you know, I think, has Facebook been on, what, eight, eight nine years now? Is it more? Probably about uh, 10 years, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably about that time frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you and I in the first five years, I mean, we didn't have this distraction on social media of people growing incredible businesses online. Um, you must have your own thoughts and opinions on what you see because we see a lot of fitness professionals growing, trying to grow very, very quickly, but being very unfulfilled. Um, mm. If you had your opportunity to, as we are right now, to just give your opinion to any coach that's, you know, thinking 
uh, of jumping ship before they've done a percentage of their time in a gym. If you had a trainer saying to you, look, you know, I've been in the industry a couple of years in the gym. Um, I'm finding it really difficult. I'm going to jump online and do that. What's your what's your advice? Um, well, first of all, if they're finding it difficult in person, I'd ask, well, why are you finding it in different person? What's going to be different online? Um, what, you know, how's that going to fulfill you or allow you to achieve your goals? If you're struggling in person, by and large, on most people, I think they'd struggle online just the same. It, it's not that there's anything magical about being online. I think lots of people think it's a super easy lifestyle, but what you've got to understand is that um, having online clients is just as demanding as having in-person clients. You need to, you actually probably need to be much more proactive because you need to be constantly thinking about them without having them stood in front of your face. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, I'd wonder if, if you're not fulfilled in person, is it going to change being online? You might want to actually think about, you know, what you're trying to achieve, what your, what your message is and who you're trying to reach. And, and, you know, is, is that right for you yeah. um, in that respect? Then if you are going to go online, I think you've got to be really clear about who you're trying to help because one thing I'd say that in my in-person clients, um, there's a reasonable uh, diverse group of people I train in person because I've trained some of them for, for a decade and they've sort of grown with me as, as I've grown through my journey. And then there's other guys I've taken on a, a bit more recently who have a slightly different demographic. But in person, I just work with one you know, one type of person, yeah, yeah, which is online, the skinny yeah. guy trying to, sorry, as I say in person, on, online, I, I work with skinny guys trying to build muscle, so, you know, the typical hard gainers. And you really have to niche down online because it's such a, such a wide pool. Um, so many voices trying to, trying to get traction. Whereas in person PT, you know, locations an element. So yeah. your proximity to someone. So being based in central London, most of my clients, uh, guys that work in banking, you know, they work in finance, they, um, you know, and they make good money, um, but they want someone who's close to them because they haven't got that much time to, to spend away from the desk mm -hmm. in the gym. And, and, and based on that, obviously, working in the city, it's very important for us to kind of talk about this because when you first started PTing, how much were you charging an hour? Um, so way back when, when I was with that, uh, that company that they sourced the client, I believe it was £40 an hour, yeah. but I got, I got £20 back then. Okay, great. So what you've essentially done, and this is why we're going to talk about scaling, over the last you know, seven, eight years, nine years, your goal has been to slowly increase your fees mm -hmm. over time, which you've done. Yeah. And at what point, and we, we're going to talk about scaling your business because we're not going to talk about running a personal training face-to-face -face business. We're going to talk about you scaling and you growing over time. What got you to the point where you went, okay, I've done so many hours, I am earning a certain amount of money, I'm ready to make the next shift. What What did you, initially, did you see the next shift as increasing your hourly rate? Is that how you first started to scale? And then at what point did you say, now I'm going to break online? Yep. So absolutely, uh, it was the, the price uh, increase. And for a long time, it was the price increase. I, um, I, I you know, once I was full, um, I'd increase it, you know, by five pounds an hour or, or something like that. Um, was that your big? Was if you don't mind me just jumping in, in terms of getting to the point when you felt you were ready to increase your price, what what was what was the determining factor for you? So I suppose there was a few stages. So once was um, as I increased my education. So when I was first working as a PT, I was also doing um, a sports science degree. So once I'd got um, a bit of experience and I finished the sports science degree I felt like I was in a position to charge a little bit more I had that bit more knowledge and a credit, another accreditation to my name so that that went there likewise after I'd completed my master's in strength and conditioning that was another element but then most importantly was um, the results I was getting and the number of people I had wanting to train with me so there was the demand so when I had a bit of a waiting list certainly for peak hours that was an opportunity for me to put the price up not necessarily always f uh, for existing people but it's like anyone that's coming on the new price is this and you know and it's it's more than the, the amount clients are paying is more than uh, doubled um across the that timeline and do you know what's quite great is you've just reiterated something that i teach a lot when there's you know when you create a brand and people essentially want to come and work for you that means that people outside of the gym are saying look you need to go and see this guy tom and this guy tom when you uh you know, go and reach out to him he'll book you in for a consultation whatever that means you're in demand. And if the sessions aren't dropping, you're in a perfect position to increase fees and maybe drop off an old client that's not doing particularly well. And then what we have, this increase in fees, changing of the clients over, and that opportunity for you to scale. So to any trainer out there, Tom, that thinks, um, you know, I'm struggling to scale my business by increasing my hourly rate, 
the things that you did, one was making sure you're in demand, two, making sure you're hitting a quality service, mm-hmm. three, obviously, therefore, getting referrals. Is there anything else you want to add on that that, that, that that you would say to trainers? Listen, you know, you might be charging 35 an hour now. In most cities, to me, there's another 10, 15 pounds on top of that uh, as a minimum in terms of demand um, that you could eventually increase your prices to. What would you add to how how to scale that increase in revenue? Well, I think one of the most important things that's overlooked is actually genuinely caring about yep. the results and being invested in your, your client's results and realizing that um, doing one good job of just one person can be the key that unlocks the door to uh, a load of referrals. I've, I've got one particular client who um, year, years and years ago, I actually I'd, I was too busy. I didn't want to take him on. I tried to, it's when I was running my gym, I tried to pass him to someone else and he was insistent he wanted to work with me. So I picked a slightly higher number and, it, and said, you know, if you want to work with me, it's cost this. He said, fine. Guy got incredible results, photo shoot, done multiple photo shoots. Little did I know, he was incredibly well connected, um, you know, in, in, um, in very wealthy circles. And a whole host of clients then sort of contacted me wanting to train. Um, and and that, that then gave me the platform to push on. But when I was working with him, I was, I was chasing him up nonstop. I knew his goal was big. He, he, he'd been training, but he just hadn't seen the results. He was committed and it's, we, we needed to find a way to get him in the shape that he always dreamed he could get in. Yeah. When we achieved that, he basically couldn't stop telling people about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's really important to actually really want the results for, for, for your clients. And not from a selfish point of view of this will make me feel good, but realizing that if you make them feel that great, they just won't be able to help themselves but tell everyone they know. Do you know what? That, that, that as a lesson, guys, if you could stop the podcast right now, that would double your revenue. You know, if you could, if you're a PT face to face, I I never forget. Um, you know, just like Tom's done, day after day, hour after hour, just making sure you were doing the best you possibly could, increasing it, measuring. You know, is there something I could do? I know you're very diligent with this, Tom. Is there something better I could be doing? Is there a part of my service that I can increase? And to the point where your clients, you don't ask for it, but your clients end up telling everybody. But it's getting the result that they actually want. And then they start telling everybody they are your best piece of marketing. Mm-hmm. So just like everybody, we're going to have trainers going, all right, all right, I'm a PT. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm working in a gym. When do we get to earn more? You know, when do we get to, to, to grow more? I know in the industry, everybody's like, I want to earn more, more, more. Well, stop, check. One is become great so that everybody talks about you. Next stage is you get to the point where you know that you've got a, a ceiling to a certain degree. I know right now that you could, and you have told me recently that you've just said, silly number to the odd person because and they'll pay it right and you're in that position where you can and i'm sure over time that'll become even more as 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 you develop but now you're in this position so we get to um the point where you didn't have an online business where did you start growing your instagram page so a couple of years ago i started dabbling with it um what was the reason for you what was the reason for just so that we can get the context of this you were pting Mm -hmm. you must have thought right now it's time to do something to scale. What 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 yes. what, what what happened there? So the the reason you want to know the reason? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. My reason is my family. So um, we got two young kids, my wife and I, and like I knew I needed to do more to get where I wanted to go and have the lifestyle we wanted. Amazing. So um, you know, the the idea is she's given up work and she used to have a really good job, and the idea is to her. She doesn't have to go back to work. If she wants to go back, it's on her terms. Yeah. So financially, we're in a position she can do the hours she wants in a job that she enjoys, not not just going to collect a paycheck. Yeah. And that wasn't going to happen. Me just training people for a, even a, you know, even a very good hourly rate, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. And so, do you know what? Um, I got, is it Diamond Derman, the uh, one of the Shark Tank guys? Um, he basically said the other day, "Oh, here we go. Here's another fifteen-year millionaire." Um, because ultimately his big thing is, you know, all the million, everybody thinking that it's going to take five, five minutes to just achieve what you want. Essentially, you've now got to this point where you are, you know, 15 years into your career and uh, you, you're, you're now in this very fortunate position where you go, OK, I've got to a certain point And now can I now take it to the next level? Right. Yes. So with everything that's going on on social media at the moment and seeing people's opportunity to scale, was your natural thought process online? Yes, I, I very much thought, um, from seeing what other people have achieved and, and reaching people, 
that was the way to go. I've, I've never done uh, any sort of any on the ground uh, marketing, like I said, with, with PT. I've just relied on word of mouth. So I didn't have any experience in, you know, I suppose, marketing around me. And, and obviously online presented a great opportunity. You can reach so many more people. Yeah. And it's, uh, just if you got to 20 minutes of the podcast, you're thinking, where are we going with this? Let me just tell you that Tom has had an incredible amount of growth by serving his time online uh, face to face to be able to then leverage a degree, a very big degree of what he knows. And over the next part of the podcast, we're now going to be talking about how he's made the shift from personal training to online, what has actually happened online, a lot of the pitfalls and, and, and things that he struggled with online. And also as a, as a team, me and him, what have we been able to do to actually get his online presence to where it is? So Tom, we got to the point where you started your online, um, let's say you started your presence online. With, yes. you know, a lot of people say, I want to start online training. The first thing you do when you're online training is you have to decide what the brand is. And I don't think you did that from the beginning, did you? Not really. No. So, I mean, um, we, I had um, a website, Flat Whites, Free Weights, which was basically because I enjoy lifting weights. And uh, with two, uh, two young kids, I was addicted to coffee and Flat White was my, my favorite one. I wanted to put some, some thoughts out online in terms of writing some articles and things. And so that was, that was the brand name, which isn't exactly catchy. And um, everyone would sort of stumble over it. First time you heard it, you, you called it free weight, flat thingamajigs or whatever. So it, it wasn't a, you know, wasn't a master stroke of marketing uh, in that respect. Um, and, and we've, we've worked on that. We've rebranded now. Everything's yeah, we'll, under the we'll Tom get, McCormick we'll name. That. Yeah, definitely. Now, interesting. So, so you, you went online, you did your website, you started off your Instagram page, um, with the intention of what, what was your original intention with your online platform? Well, so it was to build up my online coaching, much like we have done. Um, yeah. Again, a little bit like when I had a gym, I was kind of like, well, if I start posting online, uh, people, people, people will want to come work with me. They'll be, they'll, they'll be sort of dropping emails, beating, the, beating down my door, as it were, to, uh, to, to get in front of me and, and did that start happen? working. Nope. Right, right. Well, the <laughs> first cool. thing this is this is amazing, right? Because I, I never forget when I first started posting on Facebook before Instagram came about. You know, I saw people writing blogs, no one was liking them, no one was engaging with them. And I have to tell you, Tom, that nearly on a you actually messaged me last yesterday and said, "There you go on your podcast again. You've asked people to DM you to have a look at their Instagram because it upsets me to to see." how long people are, um, it, you know, I, I just want to help people. It's like when you see somebody in the gym doing something wrong, you and me have always gone up to people and just helped them because it's naturally we care. And I see a trainers posting day to day on their social media, not realizing that there is no brand, there is no clarity with what it is. So you were posting um, yeah. and you were posting to what audience? Anybody, fat loss, muscle building? What was it all about? Well, I, in my mind, I was posting to, to the, 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 I'd identified the avatar I wanted to work with. It just turns out I really wasn't efficient at, at speaking in their language. Essentially, what I posted was what I was interested in. So, you know, I'll get quite deep into the theory behind certain parts of, of training and, and, you know, a topic would interest me. I'd make posts about that, yep. not realizing that the, the guy who's struggling to build muscle, who's new to this, has no idea. It doesn't relate to them in any way, shape or form. I'm just satisfying my own ego um, really by posting some stuff that makes you look vaguely intelligent. Yeah, and, and a lot of people contact me and they'll say, you know, what do you think to my page? And I said, it's all about you and it's sharing information that you like. Now, um, you had a bit of a breakthrough in uh, writing your blog content. And Tom, guys, you know, is a very, very intelligent guy, um, writes incredibly well. But you had a bit of a breakthrough. And I think a lot of trainers put a lot of their content out trying to get attention um, and trying to tell people they're great. And one of the things that Tom just does is write great content content and people find out that he's great and you got picked up by um you know how, what was the introduction to uh writing for various different people back websites okay so i've um i sort of took a gradual step-by-step -step approach to that so um i started writing on my own blog to improve my skill of writing um you know i'm sure what when i first started writing it it wasn't um as good as it is now and obviously in time it'll improve and then I reached out to someone who I knew who had a pretty reasonable following online, but they had their own blog and offered them a guest post, a uh, guest blog, sorry. Um, they were happy to have that. I did that, got some good feedback. Someone contacted me from a slightly larger website saying, really like this, can you, can you do some for me? Same, same thing. This, this is all you know, pay, uh, not, not paid, f free stuff. Sort of built my confidence and got to the point where I was like, right, I'm going to submit to T Nation which is, as far as I was concerned, in the industry, like it's, it's the, web, the website, the one I'd always, 
like love love reading from day dot as a, as a trainer you know i was on there every day reading the stuff and um, i'd always thought it'd be cool to have my name up there with an article so i submitted an article to them and then there was sort of crickets um a bit of tumbleweed came through no reply two weeks later um just it's about it's about a two-line email saying sorry can't use this um thanks nothing more and and at that point for a, for a minute or two i was kind of like right ah uh, yeah i'm no good at this writing i'm not going to bother and then the following week, um, I'd set aside. I'd been setting aside time each Wednesday to write, and then I, I had this idea for an article. I thought this is good. I'm, I'll submit this one. If they don't take this, then um, then then I'll then I'll call it quits. So I submitted it, and then literally within about half an hour, an email came back from the editor. Love this, great. This will work. Yes, and um, and then it. from there, uh, from there, I you know I, I've now written I don't know, about about twenty articles for Teen Nation. Um, roughly the same for breaking muscle. I've been on elite FTS several times and what I hadn't realized uh, with a little bonus on this is that teen nation pay you. So, um, that, that article I was writing thinking it'd just be great to have my name up there. Now all of the articles I've written for them, I, I've been paid for, which is, which is you know, literally a bonus. So this seemed to be a diet. I mean, I've got over 300 blogs on M10 and my business, uh, on M10 life, um, section is over obviously a hundred mini blogs with the podcast and stuff. How have you found the value of writing your blogs over the, the years. That's so, you, had a great impact in your reach. Yes. So, I mean, f- from, um, from purely a business standpoint, it gets me in front of a l- way more eyeballs than I would otherwise achieve. You know, like Teen Nation has one and a half million followers on Facebook or something like that. So their reach is huge. And I've now picked up um, several online clients who are purely contacting me because they've read an article and they're like, I want, I want to work with you because this is great. Yeah. Um, I've, I've even picked up uh, in-person PT client who um, who's read my stuff on on T Nation, but he happens to be based in London and, and reached out. So f- just from a financial point of view, it's been very uh, very good in that respect. But the the real reason um, why I think it's so valuable is because I have to now uh, distill these concepts down into a language that is understandable to the the layperson, and it makes me better at communicating communicating with my clients in person and online. Um, I know the subject matter better because I have to research it, write it, and and think how I'm communicating that message and yeah i think it's made me a better coach and i think do you know what tom you're saying that you know over the years i sit and only phil learning and i were at the uh, his baby wife's baby shower at the weekend and we had a great conversation about the hours that we've spent writing Mm -hmm. and when you write an article you don't just off the cuff you know obviously way way more than me for writing for top publications you know i remember when muscle and fitness or, or, or or men's health would ask me to write an article and i'd spend hours looking at the research making sure that it wasn't be contradictory and there's nothing better than an editor coming back saying nothing to change with this i love it yeah yeah yeah. And and, and i remember you know john Plummer, even with with flex i sent him an article and he said I wouldn't change a thing. Love it. And I thought, do you know what? That That's an editor saying, great job. And I know with you, it's happened the same. But it's not just about the accolade of it. It's the fact that you take the time to research your subject and you get better at your content and your subject matter when you have to research it and you present it. Now, you obviously have got traction with that. People are getting to know you. Um, you still weren't building a lot of online clients. And then we got to the point where you said, I'm going to reach out to Mark. So that was yeah. seven months ago. Mm-hmm. What was our original goal? What, what, from your perspective, the whole idea of scaling now, where, where do you want to get to? Right. Well, we, we set the target of let's get 20 uh, online clients very specifically. Um, I had a handful at the time. Um, a couple of those were people who'd contacted me um, after sit, read my stuff. And the other few were people that I previously trained in person who had moved away. So I hadn't really been very successful at, at using the Internet to, to draw people into working with me. So initially, our goal was, right, let's hit that number, let's achieve that, and then we can build. That's that's another platform to build on. Great. Now, let's think of it like this. You'd already developed a – your following at that time was what? On Instagram. Yeah. When we, we started working together, I had around about 10,000 followers yeah. who um, – had come to me for a collection of you know all sorts of different posts yeah. and weren't very engaged or, or you know interacting with my page but credit to you through your own persistence with getting your publications out there your blogs out there which to be honest over the years has accounted for a lot of my stuff i remember one of my videos actually going on the lad bible website um mm. and i woke up this morning to fi- that morning to 5000 new followers yeah. um who granted aren't personal trainers and probably over the years have left me but it certainly helped my reach. And so, you know, you've done something which a lot of trainers aren't doing at the moment. It's writing blogs and getting in front of eyeballs. So that's a great way of increasing your following. But what we suddenly realized is that that following 
um, after I started to speak to you very clearly about what is your audience? Who are your customer? And you were like, well, this is who I want them to be. But to me, flat whites and free weights was not that. And certainly potentially confusing. There's a lot of trainers out there who are trying to grow a brand, but in all fairness, it's a personal brand, not a corporate brand. So flat whites, free weights was a name, not necessarily what the brand stood for. And what the brand stood for, interestingly, was you've had a journey yourself to add muscle, correct? Yes, 100%. And the interesting thing that we identified there was the big reason why Tom wants to work with skinny guys is because of your own backstory. So just briefly, your backstory, I mean, that plays a big part in being able to communicate with your audience, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, in some respects, it uh, makes my life a lot easier because I'm, I'm talking to myself from a decade, maybe 15 years ago, and I'm, I obviously know myself very well. So I know the struggles I was going through, the thoughts I had, um, uh, and what, what I needed. Um, now I've got that experience, I can pinpoint, that's what I needed. But back then, I was, you know, uh, in like a needle in a haystack searching for the answers not having a clue what what those answers were yeah yeah and so what we what we did initially and this is a real big tip for you guys you know your backstory if you've if you've been struggling with weight loss and you've got credibility in that area area i did a video the other day about credibility tom's credibility was himself and to granted you hadn't actually taken a lot of skinny guys to adding muscle at that you know it's not like you, you'd helped people add muscle in the gym for 10 15 years but it wasn't you didn't have that reputation purely as that no, and, and and ultimately we had to identify that as the market that we were going to target. So even with ten thousand followers, we were about to introduce your audience to exactly who it is that you're going to target. Yes, yeah, and as I did that, and as you'd identified in advance, my numbers might drop off at first um, because people uh, that were on my page were something like, "Oh, this is this isn't for me," and it, and it happened um, just like you predicted. But then it it flipped, and we started steadily climbing, and it, it grew really well from there. And so the first thing we identified was you're growing a personal brand and, and to grow a personal brand it is Tom McCormick, right? So mm-hmm. the big thing that we had to do initially was change Flat White's Free White's website, get the Tom McCormick URL, um, change the, 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 the Instagram page, um, and then make it very, very clear in your bio that you were the skinny, uh, providing the, the, the solution, the skinny guy's equation, right? Solving the skinny guy's equation, that's correct, right? Yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. So essentially, you go on Tom's page, you're solving the skinny guy equation, and then it's a case of creating content to that particular person and not wavering from it. That That's yeah. something that, that you've been, it's been very evident with you. What were some of the initial strategies that you kind of put in place to start talking to that specific customer? And how do you feel that, you know, what are the, some of the things that you did str- you know, that we talked about that actually got people to be very, very clear of who you were talking about, to, who right. talking to. So I just, um, first of all, put myself in their shoes and thought back to when I was starting out and, and what was I struggling with? What did I, what questions did I have? What mistakes was I making? Um, you know, the, the, the muscle mags were telling me this, which weren't actually right for me. And what were the answers to all that? And I had a, a great big list of um, sort of things that they were struggling with. I created my top 10 uh, struggles with the skinny guy. And then from that, sort of like a, a tree branch worked off and, okay, how can I put content out that um, educates, informs, motivates, and inspires them um, over, over the course of um, each week, each month to, to get them understanding what they need to do um, and reach their goals. So that, that point you just said, educate? Inform, motivate, and inspire. Right. We've talked about this at length, but a lot of you guys don't really necessarily get this you know educate inform motivate and inspire i mean within those realms educate you're an educated guy you do a lot of research on your tub subjects mm-hmm. um your content teaches yes how are you inspiring people well by showing them my journey um which i, I something we'll touch on as well i wasn't that good at first it was lots of infographics and i was biased towards the education showing them what's possible showing them some client results uh, to start showcasing what other people are, uh, are achieving. And the, the pursuit over the long, hard, uh, long, long term pays off. So the, this is where we want to not let people be under the illusion that, oh, it's going to be rapido, rip, rapido. Initially, were people biting? No. Nope. Uh, Important, it, we know. It, it, as, as I said, my, initially my numbers went down. So with the Instagram, you can, um, if you've got 10,000 followers, you can do the swipe up on your story. And I, I had that, and then I didn't have that because it just dipped below, and then and then it bounced back up, and now we're we're comfortably clear of that. But 
um, it, it was fantastic you having that um, that foresight to let me know you might drop off at first because otherwise if I was doing this my own I'd have been thinking oh this isn't working what am I doing I'll, I'll, I'll I won't pursue this because in advance uh, you'd flagged it up for me I kind of knew it was a possibility I trusted the process I just kept doing it um, we'd agreed I was going to post twice a day every day and that's that's what I've done for seven and a bit months I haven't missed a day in that respect um, just showing up every day with a bit of information for the guys that I want to work with and in time that creates momentum. And you know what's quite funny? The reason I had the insight for the drop-off in followers is because when I, I used to do, when everybody started doing the tick and cross videos for saying this exercise is right, this exercise is wrong, it was very valuable. It grew my following very, very quickly. But as I then doubled down on helping personal trainers build a business and a brand, even though I'd been teaching a bit about that, it was combined with my bodybuilding and training execution. Then I wanted to get very, very clear on just helping personal trainers build a business and a brand. Um, I had five to 6,000 people drop off my page in a matter of months because I suddenly wasn't solving their problem. But then mm. I was solving other people's problems and trainers were coming on board in, in a quicker. Like a lot of bodybuilders were moving away from my page. And so what we did is obviously you, you, you stayed consistent. How important has consistency been in this journey for you? Uh, it's it's crucial. I think it, if in anything you want to achieve, consistency is vital. Uh, it's much like the message I'm putting across to people about muscle building is that they need to be consistent. If I um, make a couple of posts and disappear, which is what I used to do when I first got the page going, I can't expect anyone to really buy in or respect my opinion because yeah. I'm not showing up for them. I'm, I'm not showing that I'm committed. So by being consistent, I think you know almost subliminally, I'm, I'm sending anyone who's potentially wanting to work with me that message of like, he cares, he's, he's in this for the long haul and he's, he's going to do what's required. Well, let, let's, on this level of consistency, I think I want to just drop the bomb with everybody as to what you kind of have achieved and then we're going to sort of jump into how we did that because mm -hmm. um, our whole idea, at the time when we first started, what was kind of online coaching as a percentage of your revenue? How has that changed? And then we're going to get into how that's happened. Okay, so it's, it's changed... Uh a great deal. So it was about 8% of my revenue. Now it's um, about a third of my revenue. And my revenue overall is higher than it was then. So it's not a third of the same amount. It's a, a third of a higher number. So it's it's dramatically improved. So I think we worked out there's, there's like nearly like a 20% increase in overall revenue across that time frame. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, actually, it's close to 30% 30%. in total revenue yep. in that time frame. And now um, online uh, coaching takes up 25% of that, that total number. And we originally had a target of, was it 3K in that first period of time? Yep, to, just from online coaching. From yeah. online coaching. That target was a year. We've done that in six months. Yeah, we hit that, yeah. So that's a big thing. It's just, just, just looking at revenue-wise, guys, this has been a, a huge jump. Now, how we've done that is not like, oh, great, I'm going to start an online page and it's just going to grow as quick as we can. I'm not going to... Be that guy that says, you know, here we go, jump on board. It's a six-figure solution, bam, bam, bam. This is a growing process. You started with how many online clients? Uh, four. And now? 20. Great. So we're now increasing that. But what we've also been able to do is off the leverage of the online clients that you've got, we've now got a really revved up audience of people specifically looking to improve their body shape. Now, Online clients, what has been the hardest thing about actually getting online clients? So converting them to paying clients um, is, is a challenge because, you know, they don't, they don't know you. You've got some content out there um, and they maybe find it interesting. But, you know, parting with their hard-earned cash is, is, is a bigger sell. Um, so now being – one thing that's really helped me is being a – you know, humanizing my page is one yeah. thing you talked about. So there was a lot of information, lots of infographics, but not that much about me. And, and people, they, they buy from you. They buy from the person. Uh, they don't want to just think it's um, some, you know, infographic generator page. So whilst the infographics are still important for me, finding strategies to get myself a bit more visible, um, let them build a, a kind of feel like they're building a personal relationship with me um, and seeing if I'm a good fit for them. Because if they want to hire a coach, they need to know it's someone that they um, they can work with um, and they, they, they gel with. And would you say that's been the biggest part of the growth of your online clients has come from adding the human element in? Yes. In terms of uh, actually recruiting clients, yes. So the first step was building that following. Eyeballs. Yep. Eyeballs. In, in, infographic. Yep. yep. And then in terms of actually then um, 
re- recruiting clients. Um, yes, being being um, visible um, in my stories, having videos, having photos of me or videos of me talking through topics on the page as well has really made a made a difference. And then understanding that a good Instagram post isn't just about how many likes it gets. So that's important for building a following. But also there's some some posts I've made which are nowhere near as many likes but they get me three or four inquiries and realizing the difference in the type of post you're putting out and what you're trying to achieve with each post. So quite interesting here. We've got attention strategy. Attention strategy is get get our content out there. I had over, you know, you know, 1500 likes and 700 shares on one of my infographics the other day, which actually bought me, as I saw on the post, 40 new followers. Now those followers are going to watch me just as they do you. And the infographics are going to get shared all over the world. And the quality of the infographics, if it's consistent, will keep people on your page because they like the content. The likelihood of them buying from you, like you said, is very, very low. So what you've got to do is the attention content versus the engagement content are two different types, aren't they? Mm. Yes, that's what you've very, noticed very so. that, that, that most people get it wrong. Attention, attention, attention. We've got to humanize it and make people feel connected to the brand because people buy from you, which is the brand, Tom McCormick. But if they don't get to know Tom McCormick, it doesn't happen. Yeah. And Interestingly, we've got to that 20 and then we've got engaging people. What we've also realized is, as we've got to now is that we still need to try and leverage and build a better relationship with the people that are following you. So we built your initial lead magnet, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And the whole idea of the lead magnet was to get the people that are following you onto an email list where you can build more relationships. And mm-hmm. your lead magnet was what? To, to those people that are new to lead magnets, it's a free program or free piece of information that you can give away in exchange for an email. So what was that? So that was the ultimate skinny guys Bible, how to gain your first 10 pounds of muscle. And it's a 10 week uh, training and uh, nutrition ebook that will we'll walk them uh, through the process of, of gaining their first 10 pounds. Amazing. And, and the good thing about this is that you've seen that Thomas built his following. Um, he's got very, very clear, very consistent. We've got an online data, online client base in less than six months, which has given him the level of revenue that he wanted. Um, but then more importantly, now building the lead magnet, which has got over 700 on it now, right? It's, uh, it's just over, it's just shy of 850 now. 850, right? So yeah. in less than three months, two months, we've got to 850 people on the email list, which is a lead. And therefore, mm. these are people that have said, I like your content on social media. I'm actually now going to join your email list, which is closer to Tom, which is actually going to guide people into a Facebook group, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And the latest thing that we, we're, are, are we, are we going to mention what could potentially be down the pipeline? Yeah, we can, we can mention uh, Go on then. the, Go the, on the then. big, the big reveal. Um, so we have the the Lean Bulk Academy, which will be uh, an online resource um, subscription um, process for guys that want to work with me, want to have guidance of their training nutrition and understand more about it uh, to, to take them through the process of adding muscle and also educating them so they can continue to gain muscle um, long term. Um, one of the reasons for doing that obviously is the time is still an issue. Training online clients still takes up time. Um, and this allows me to reach more people in a more time efficient manner at a slightly lower barrier to entry price wise. So with this, this whole episode is about scaling your fitness business. What we're going to talk about here is we, we now have a way of building up a relationship on Instagram. We now have a way of getting somebody's email address and building a closer relationship and giving something for free. We're then going to have the lean Indian, uh, the, the lean, lean Indian. <laughs> we're talking about, <laughs> we talked about Juggies Academy, didn't we? But we're going to talk about the lean Balkan Academy. And, and to be honest with you, building an academy, building somewhere for people to learn is of huge value. Um, you know, and it's quite interesting that Juggy, who initially you know, has been working with me, who was on episode number 50, has gone on to create an academy as well, which is a learning resource for people in your niche demographic that is not going to cost them as much money as online coaching, but gets the people that aren't ready to spend as much on one-to-one coaching. So we have yes. these different tiers. Granted, the people in your academy for building uh, lean muscle could eventually get to the point where they go, I want some one-on-one attention with Tom, which you could eventually charge more money. The point here, guys, is this is scaling a fitness business. This is doing your time as a PT, getting online, actually getting very clear of your demographic. Um, and this ultimately tom has allowed one important thing which is why we're talking on a wednesday correct <laughs> what's ended Absolutely. up happening with one of your goals was to do what so you know um a clear goal for mine of mine was to work from home one day per week so i now have work from home wednesday 
So, yeah, I'm sat um, in the living room uh, as we speak on a Wednesday. Um, after this call, I'll be working from home the whole day. Great. Well, I mean, do you know what? I mean, in, in terms of the, 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 the vision, now, I talk a lot, and very, very soon I'm going to be launching my Brand Impact Mastery online resource, online course, which is helping coaches build the brand, look at kind of all these different opportunities and, and marketing and getting more people like Tom's Tribe to invest uh, in them. But... From your perspective now, the vision, to give everybody an idea of how your what your vision looks like now and how much clarity has played a role in scaling your business to not only that income from online coaching, but now being able to see where the scale opportunities are. What what, what do you now see now having this 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 vision in front of you? Um, well, firstly, the vision is much bigger than it was, so that's that's great. That's exciting. A little bit scary, but but I can have a bigger impact and achieve what I want to achieve um, with that vision. And, and that vision is essentially, from a business point of view, is I want to help 100,000 skinny guys boost their self-confidence, self-belief, self-worth, and perception of what is possible by transforming their physique, by building muscle um, and, and, and staying lean. So with that vision, now it keeps me you know, hyper-focused on all the little things I need to do to achieve that. I love that. And, and do you know when we talk about these little things, I mean, one of the big things that we do when we meet up and, you know, you come over to my house and we sit down and we go through everything and brainstorm ideas. You're a very, very diligent um, action taker. Um, in terms of, there's a lot of people with ideas and stuff. I mean, I know you are very diligent with action. Um, there's a lot of people sitting there wanting to do something like this. Now, you're no different to anybody else. In fact, one thing that I haven't touched on is your confidence levels because I remember when we talked about Insta stories and doing videos, did you enjoy doing them? No. Um, one of the biggest struggles for me was the humanization of my page. I mean, I still have um, many of those same insecurities as a, as a sort of teenager growing up of uh, being a naturally skinny, uh, skinny guy who was bullied for being so small. I don't really like having my photo taken. I'd rather not have to chat into a camera most of the time if, if I couldn't. I'd, I'd far, that's one of the reasons I went for, for writing when I started out was it was easier to put the thoughts down there and hopefully they're of value, but I didn't have to have to be visible. So that's been a real challenge for me. And, it's, and uh, 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 Go on, Tom, carry on. No, 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 no. after you go for it. I, I was just going to say, um, I don't lean, mean to lean towards any emotion here, um, but I know it's a subject that matters to both me and you, the growth of our families and our lives. But suddenly standing in front of the camera and doing it, the link to you not doing it versus doing it and everything that you want to achieve in life, were you able to make that correlation to it's an important thing I need to do? Yes. Um, you know, we, we had a meeting and I remember you saying, you know, you, you need to you need to focus more on this. This is, you know, what, what you kind of miss. You, you're missing out on. And then I think you said, well, you know, how how does that impact on what you want to achieve? And then you you go through that flow of where if I'm not in front of the video and I'm not uh, getting in front of those potential clients, and I'm not converting them. And that means I don't reach this financial target. And that has implications for for my family, yeah. uh, which, is, which is the most important driver. And, um, and I don't want to be letting them down. And do you know what? I, I talk to so many trainers at the moment. They like, I just can't. I don't take action. I don't do anything. And and sometimes one of the biggest re, the biggest problems is responsibility. You know, you and I have both got massive responsibilities. We've got families. And when I was very independent, uh, it was interesting that, that I could only link everything to bodybuilding. But ultimately, if I wanted to be known as the best coach in the country for what I do, my built. Do you know what? If I was eating seven meals a day. And at the height of eating the most I've ever meat eaten in an off season, alongside Jordan, me and him were messaging each other, going, "Oh my God, I can't eat any more carbs." And I didn't miss the meals, and I didn't because I knew that the growth of my physique was directly correlated with my reputation in the industry and the ability to meet other different people. And so I didn't have to have the responsibility of my a wife. I didn't have to have the responsibility of of training personal trainers all over the world. My goal at that time was so clear that I wanted to be one of the best coaches in the country. And so if, if eating seven meals was what was needed to get there, like with you, if getting up at 5.30 in the morning till X o'clock at night to become the best coach that you could be, you just do it. And I think trainers have a big disconnect with that. Would you agree? Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think one of the other things is, uh, you know, it's been huge for me is finding that why and really identifying with it. But well, it, it happens when you have a family, it kind of naturally happens. But before I'd probably... Um, just focus on being the best coach I could be for my clients and that was my goal and that's great nothing wrong with that at all but now I've got a, a bigger purpose 
Um, and that means I have to overcome some of those fears. And rather than just really getting geeky and learning, um, you know, the, the stuff to help my own clients, I need to find ways to get out and, and help more people. And that means I have to put myself out there a bit more, which isn't something that I'm comfortable with at first. But, you know, very quickly you adapt. And now I haven't got a problem um, having a chat on my Instagram and, and worrying, you know, is, is that perfect? Is, you know, is it going to get criticism? You know, I put out what I can, uh, the, the best content I can to help the people I'm trying to help. And avoiding criticism. Most people are ter terrified that the likes of you and me are going to read their content and be, oh my God, it's absolutely rubbish or da 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 One of the things I teach trainers is at the end of the day, the most important people that are reading your content, Tom, are skinny guys. Mm -hmm. And would you find that the, the, the easiest way to quash any fear of writing content is to be, just be clear who it is you're trying to help? 100% be clear who you're trying to speak to and what they need and only try and help them and accept that that won't necessarily help everyone. That's the whole point. If you know, you, you, you can't help everyone, you can't please everyone all of the time. So that's, that's it. Um, and, and actually in some respects relishing that when you get that little bit of criticism, that's fine because it means that you're showing, putting stuff out there that really helps who it needs to help. And someone else disagrees with it, which is also fine because they're not your target market. And you're kind of filtering out the people that you don't need to, or certainly at this moment in time, don't need to be in front of. You just want people that you can help. Yeah, and, and it's specific and interestingly enough, we started at 10,000 following and we're over, how many are you at now? Uh, just north of 23,000, I think. 23,000 people. And these are people following Thomas Page because they want to improve muscle and they resonate yeah. with his message. And this has been done from a, probably a drop from 10 to 8 to 10 to 9, up to over 23,000 followers in, in seven months. And I'm not going, I never like to be, you can be exactly, you can be like Tom, because Tom's putting out, at some point you're putting three posts out a day, right? Yeah, I did that for a period of time, yeah. And that saw a lot of growth. Yes, um, it, it was at, it, that was around Christmas. Have you got um, your figures, Tom? Yeah, I have got my figures. Guys, I know it's a quite a lengthy podcast today, but do you know what? I don't give a monkeys because I could sit and talk to Tom all day because do you know why? It's helping you. And if you are halfway through this, you have to take a break or you're, we're not going to say we're going to go on for another half an hour. But if you've got to this point, just hang on because this is going to be a big impact in your career. The, the, the growth, just talk about some of the figures kind of like at the beginning, middle and end. What's, yeah, what's sure. changed? So I, I, um, you, you said you wanted me to uh, to take a look at what was happening with my Instagram, what what posts were getting likes and engagement and stuff. And I'm not sure you expected me to do this Excel spreadsheet. But anyway, I went away and did this uh, Loved it. this this spreadsheet. So week one, when we started out together, I, I had a, a combined week um, weekly reach of seven thousand four hundred and sixty, and I got forty two profile visits. Um, I I then kept plugging away, um, and week on week it, it grew, um, and then it kind of settled. Um, after about 12 weeks, I've been consistently uh, getting 80 to 90,000 reach um, per week. And I was, you know, I, I got 1,000 visits uh, to my profile in one of those weeks. But then it kind of, it settled in there for a while. And I just, I kept, kept putting the content out. Which is uh, where, Tom, most people would back off and think it's not working. Yes. So we, we, we kind of, it looked like I'd reached a bit of a plateau. Because in week eight, I'd reached 95,000 people. But then in week 13, I was only at 68,000 people. However, I kept plugging away, and around that Christmas time, it kind of really, it really jumped. Um, now, people are on their phone, they've got more time maybe, but all of a sudden, I was hitting north of 200,000 reach per, per week. Unbelievable. Um, obviously, I was, as a result, I was getting much more engagement, um, lots more inquiries, lots more questions coming away, and naturally, um, more, uh, more online clients. Um, and then I just kept going, and then we really uh, it just took off. And so within um, less than six months of working together, I'd gone from starting out with a reach of 7,460 to having 771,000 uh, one week. Wow. wow. And interestingly, the saves on your infographics on average have gone from the beginning what to what? Mate, let me just, let me just pull this up so I've got it. So week one, I had 54 saves across all the posts I did that week. Um, and then in uh, week 25 of working together, I had 19,500 saves. Wow. Now, guys, we're not going to go into Facebook marketing and advertising, but let me just tell you, the audience reach, the engagement with your content is hugely valuable when it comes down the line to marketing. And we haven't even touched on that with Tom yet. Uh, I've got a lot more to kind of work on with in terms of, you know, bear in mind, we haven't done, how many Facebook ads have we done, Tom? Zero. Exactly, exactly. And everybody's like, we need Facebook ads, Facebook ads. Like, let's be honest, Tom got a niche. 
he knows his core audience, he knows his customers, he's got 20 online followers, which is an, an increase, if you guys are listening to this just right now, six to seven months and increasing the 3k a month has given him the freedom to, to, to back off um, and, and spend some time, not back off, but work at home. Um, what I want to just reiterate in this podcast, this is scaling your fitness business. Tom and I, were very. Imp- it's very important for us, if you've got to the, this point in the podcast, to say, neither of us wanted to do this episode and say this is a six-figure podcast. That's so important because Tom's an authentic coach, very passionate, very diligent, and a great human being. Myself, you guys know that my values are work ethic is what makes you successful. Time in the trenches makes you successful. Being knowledgeable makes you successful. Or ditch the whole fitness thing and become a marketer. Because as you, Tom and I are learning, you know, I know this from my game. I spend a lot of time studying marketing, but I still stay grounded with being a great coach. But Tom has done a long time. I mean, interestingly, Tom, just on this point, um, how, how do you think that social media, uh, what opportunities do you think it gives trainers? And do you think it's an excuse for a, for a shortcut? I think it gives a huge opportunity. Yep. Um, before this existed, you know, you, you, I've, I've got clients all over the world now. I, I wouldn't, there's no chance I would have that. Yep. Um, so it's definitely an absolute opportunity. Um, shortcut seems like a, a negative word. I yep. think it's perceived as a shortcut. I'm not sure it is a shortcut. I think you, you need to put the work in just the same. It's just yep. a different platform yep. um, for you to, to, to reach people and put that work in. And do you know what's funny? If you start a personal training gym, how long do you think, in your experience, just telling newer trainers to the industry, how long would you would you give a trainer to have a full diary of 30 sessions a week consistently with referrals? How long do you think that will take? Uh, I mean, I, I, well, it's an absolute minimum of six months, yep. um, I, I would say. From, from, from the guys I've known and worked with, I, I think, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of years for people to, uh, to reach that. Six months to 12, 12 months, yep. Yeah. And do you know what's interesting with this? I'm having messages from trainers that are saying to me, I started my Instagram page um, and I've not got, no, I haven't got any interest and it's been two months. And the first thing that you and I said is when you're in a gym walking around, you're in front of people that have almost, people in a gym are almost people that have searched for personal trainer on Google. Because if you type per, personal trainer Nottingham in Google, you're looking for a personal trainer in Google. No one's going on Instagram looking for a skinny guy saviour. Mm. So they need to be nurtured and built up in a gym, three months to six months to 12 months, you want to nurture, build relationships with people, get to know people. So if it's taking you six months to even two years to build a personal training business on the ground, trust me, you've got to learn marketing to get online as well. And this is where this episode is, you know, I'm never, ever going to tell you it's going to be easy. But what Tom is able to represent and this podcast is able to represent is that it has given a great scale opportunity by being a diligent professional who's followed very strategic systems. And if you are harder, smarter, get clear with your target audience, get clear with your vision, you can scale quite quickly. I'm sure there's a lot of people I know could scale very, very quickly. Um, But, you know, testament to you. And thank you, Tom, for sharing your experience and wisdom with everybody and some of the pitfalls that that you've run into along the way um i'm sure down the line as this grows we'll be doing another episode to discuss where you're at and how things have changed and what you've come across again um i do want to take this opportunity to thank you um first and foremost and second of all i'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people your instagram i want people to follow you first and foremost that's a big thing and also you've got a skinny guy savior download which i think is um a, 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 you know the your skinny guys equation uh, which you can tell everybody about in a second which is going to be very valuable so download that guys it's always valuable to download people's programs and then just where you can find you so tom please let everybody know all right mate thanks firstly thanks for having me on it's been a pleasure really enjoyed it um in terms of finding out more about me or following me the website is tommccormick.com the social media i'm by far most active on is instagram and i'm just on tom mccormick there um to get the ultimate skinny guys bible download it's in the bio on my instagram page click the link you'll be able to to pop your info in and it'll get emailed out to you and then you'll see um all the content in there and the the you know the email sequence that follows um you know educating and communicating with my uh, clients as we go and guys tom's going to be bringing out the skinny guys bible 2.0 very soon Invest in it, buy it, 
this Tom is a very articulate, educated guy. And if you want to level up, read his articles, buy his programs, get involved with him. And, and if you want to go through the similar sort of process that I've taken Tom through, very soon the Brand Impact Mastery course is going to be available to buy. Drop a link in my uh, Instagram bio if you want to join the beta testing group, which means you'll be available to test it for a dramatically reduced price and give me your feedback so I can bring the perfect final package to you guys. Guys, um, I'm going to say thank you to Tom. Um, it's been a brilliant having you on and I'm not saying I'm sorry that it's been an hour and four seconds because this is golden. Tom is going to impact many people over the years to come with what he's been able to build but also he's going to impact many many hundreds of thousands of people with helping them with uh, the solving the skinny guys equation. So Tom, thank you mate. Thanks mate. Pleasure.